Our scripture reading today comes from Romans chapter 10, verses 5 through 15. Romans 10, 5 through 15. Moses writes concerning the righteousness that comes from the law, that the person who does these things will live by them. But the righteousness that comes from faith says, Do not say in your heart, Who will ascend into heaven? That is, to bring Christ down. Or who will descend into the abyss? That is, to bring Christ up from the dead. But what does it say? The word is near you, on your lips and in your heart. That is, the word of faith that we proclaim. Because if you confess with your lips that Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For one believes with the heart, and so is justified, and one confesses with the mouth, and so is saved. The scripture says no one who believes in him will be put to shame, for there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. The same Lord is Lord of all, and is generous to all who call upon him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. But how are they to call on one in whom they have not believed? And how are they to believe in one of whom they have never heard? And how are they to hear without someone to proclaim him? And how are they to proclaim him unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring the good news. May the Lord bless this partial reading of his holy word. Last week at church, we had a guest speaker from One Mission Society, or OMS. They send missionaries out all over the world, following the commission of Christ to go there for and make disciples of all nations. I have heard it said that every Christian is a missionary. Today's passage tells us what we need to do. We must confess with our lips that Jesus is Lord, believe in our hearts, and go out and share the good news with others. First, we must confess with our lips that Jesus is Lord. We need to be open about our Christian identity. A popular meme says that sometimes the best way to evangelize is to tell people you're a Christian and then not act like a complete jerk. Unfortunately, there are many hypocritical Christians who are often the loudest and give the rest of us a bad name. We need to be good Christian examples, like Paul writes to the Galatians. In Galatians chapter 2, verse 20, it says, It is no longer I who live, but it is Christ who lives in me. And the life I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. People should be able to look at us and see evidence of a loving God. Historically, in our churches, we have been blessed with so many that have let their light shine. They lived the life of Christ, just as you folks continue to do today. We all probably can look back and name some people that Christ shined through. The church that I grew up in had several that I loved to watch. Just as in our church today, there are those that are being watched because they seem to epitomize the life of a believer. Second, we must believe with our hearts. Jesus said that everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. That's from John eleven twenty six, And that whoever believes in me believes in him who sent me. That's John twelve forty four. Real belief compels action. It's like it says in James that faith without works is dead. What good is it, my brothers and sisters, if you say you have faith but do not have works? Can faith save you? If a brother or sister is naked and lacks daily food, and one of you says to him, go in peace, keep warm and eat your fill, and yet you do not supply their bodily needs, what is the good of that? So faith by itself, if it has no works, is dead. And that's from James chapter 2, beginning with verse 14. Paul takes it even further. 
Going back to confessing with our lips as well as believing with our hearts, one preacher writes that Paul says that proclaiming, speaking about Jesus in public is necessary for our salvation. Believe in your hearts, yes, then you are justified, but confessing, speaking, telling about Jesus, and you are saved. Is there a distinction between justified and saved? In this passage, Paul says yes. Justified, being made right with God, is a personal thing, a reorientation of one's life, becoming a new person. Believing is never just intellectual assent. It is a reordering of one's priorities, a realignment of one's behaviors. It is a shift in one's values and actions and convictions. To believe in Jesus is to stake one's life on him, which is much more than just thinking that faith in Jesus is a good idea. You live it outwardly. Now you tell others. Now you proclaim who and what and why you are the new person that you are. You do not do this to brag or draw attention your, to yourself, but to lift up the one who caused you to redo everything about your life. You do this to bring glory to the name of Jesus. So thirdly, we must share the good news with others. As Jesus says in Mark 16, 15, go into all the world and proclaim the good news to the whole creation. And of course, we have the Great Commission in Matthew 28, verses 9 through 10. Charles Swindle wrote that whatever we do, we must not treat the Great Commission like the Great Suggestion. And we don't need to worry about being good enough. One of my seminary professors posted on his Facebook wall something that resonated with me. He said, don't deny God's call because you think God needs the best person. God doesn't need the best, but wants your best. Nadia Bolzweber knows that God can use anyone for God's purposes. She says, never once did Jesus scan the room for the best example of holy living and send that person out to tell others about him. He always sent stumblers and sinners. I find that comforting. We are all to be missionaries in some way. In Luke 10, Jesus talks about the need for laborers. He said to them, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, ask the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. We are to be building God's kingdom. The late missionary Karen Watson described the missionary heart. She says it is to care more than some think is wise, risk more than some think is safe, dream more than some think is practical, expect more than some think is possible. She said, I was called not to comfort or success, but to obedience. There is no joy outside of knowing Jesus and serving him. And the writer Madeline Lingle once said that, we draw people to Christ not by loudly discrediting what they believe or by telling them how wrong they are and how right we are, but by showing them a light that is so lovely that they want with all their hearts to know the source of it. So how do we witness to people? How can we share the good news? Ken Wilson of nearby Zelianople in his book, Too Amazing to Keep to Yourself, Bringing Your Friends to Christ and Keeping Them as Friends, offers some tips. The big ideas in his book include the following. Before doing anything else, Surrender yourself to God and make yourself fully available for him to use you. Ask God to bring people to you to whom you can bring to him. Don't expect people to come to you. Instead, you must go to them. Meet people wherever they are and meet them on your own terms. People don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. Seek to keep the gospel sharing journey safe and non-threatening for both your friends and yourself. Sometimes we must earn the right to be heard. See to make your life 
an attractive setting for the gospel. Authenticity, vulnerability, and transparency are more attractive than phoniness, arrogance, and self-piety. Let your friends set the pace for your spiritual conversations based on their openness and readiness. No one's life is so good that they can communicate the gospel without using words to share this message. Well-crafted questions are often more powerful than dogmatic statements. Your personal testimony can be a powerful tool. People can't argue with what God has done in your life. Many people in your world are ready right now to receive Christ if only someone would bring them the good news. When you sense that someone is open to the gospel, offer to share with that individual the message that has changed your life. Warren Wearsby writes, We must never minimize the missionary outreach of the church. While this passage originally related primarily to Israel, it applies to all lost souls around the world. They cannot be saved unless they call on the Lord Jesus Christ, but they cannot call unless they believe. Faith comes by hearing, so they must hear the message. How will they hear? A messenger must go to them with the message, but this means that God must call the messenger and the messenger must be sent. What a privilege it is to be one of his messengers and have beautiful feet. The gift of salvation is not something to keep to yourself. It is not a secret that you hold in the hidden places of your own heart. No, it is meant to be lived out loud so that others can come to know our God too. We all have family, friends, neighbors, and coworkers who we are praying for their salvation. That is why it is so imperative that each of us lets our light shine all over Butler County, all over Pennsylvania, all over the world. Let your light shine. Today, we have seen that God requires, not suggests, that we confess Jesus as Lord and believe in his victory over death. Such faith is available to Jew and Gentile alike. The gospel message must be heard to be believed. But even then, history demonstrates that many who hear will choose to reject God's message. May we lead others to the God of salvation and be sure that we are saved as well.